This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. My name's Anthony Padilla, and today I'll be spending a day with Aromantics to learn the truth about this largely undiscussed romantic orientation in which people experience little to no romantic attraction whatsoever. By the end of this video, we'll find out how romantic orientation relates to sexual orientation and what dating and even marriage looks like for one of our aromantic guests. Is the idea of romantic love simply a construct that's been implanted in us by society? Or are some of us simply born with or without the desire for any romantic affection whatsoever. Hello, Divinity. Hi. Nick. What up? Madeline. Hey. Where do you fall on the arrow spectrum? Fully. Fully, 100%? 100% aromantic. An arrow's arrow, like I am aromantic, romantic repulse. Full arrow, I am romantic repulse, so I'm like pretty far along like the aromantic spectrum, I suppose you could say. Holding hands out in public or things that feel too coupley end up feeling very uncomfortable for me. Or if I feel somebody is like falling for me, I just mm. don't have that emotion to throw back at them. How often do you have people say, oh, you just haven't found the right one? Oh, maybe you have avoiding attachment style. Maybe mm. you're a narcissist. And the biggest one, of course, is... Oh, you just ain't met me yet. But it's like... At this point, I am convinced, like, it's just not going to happen. Do you have people often assuming that it's just trauma-based or something to do with your childhood? For me, it's always kind of been a part of who I was. Even as a child, I never even wanted that much touch from my parents. Mm. I just had a different love language. Growing up, I was so different from my sisters in that my sisters needed constant affirmation to be held, to be cuddled. Whereas for me, I just wanted, like, words of praise. I wanted to be made to feel like I was present in the room and made to feel like I was important and validated because touch didn't validate me. So yeah. I had a rough upbringing, like a rough childhood. Mm. So I actually went to therapy to see if that was the reason why I wasn't connecting with people as I was putting it. It was actually kind of harmful. A lot of therapists and people don't know what that is. They don't have a vocabulary for it. So when I'm describing this, it sounds like something else clinically. Mm -hmm. So they're trying mm -hmm. to treat that instead of like giving me tools that will help me uncondition the things that I thought I was supposed to be because right. of who I am. So they're looking at it as something to fix, something that's wrong yes. or broken, yeah. instead of saying, how can we make you not feel shame for exactly. not having this exactly. attraction? When did you start realizing that there was something different in the way that you felt romantic attraction? I knew that I was aromantic when I found the label a couple of years ago, I felt much more at ease with who I was. I felt like I'd found that sense of community that I needed. 17 to 20, I like tried a couple of different relationships and every time I like got into it and no matter how I, I was like, okay, what if we don't have sex right away? What if we do? What if we, what if we're friends first? What if we just jump right into it? Like right. no matter how I was plugging in the information, the end was always the same. I just like was not comfortable. The real nail in the coffin was I was like, everyone was like, it's fear commitment. You just got to get through that and you'll yeah. be fine. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm sticking with it. I like her. She's awesome. And then she, can we talk about sex stuff here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so she yeah. like started like going down on me and like just nothing was happening. The repulsion was so significant that like physically I just was not attracted to her anymore. So I was like, yeah, I think we're pretty much done here. I grew up very traditional conservative Christian. So like they have like all these little classes and stuff to try to teach you how to be a wife. It's very creepy. You need to like tell God what you want in a partner. I was like watching everybody like write all this stuff down and I was just like staring at the paper like what for? Like well, for what? That was never something that I did or fantasized about. And like, I don't picture it in my mind. There's no like, there's no list. The, Windows the, era 404. <laughs> it just never compute for me. Did you ever feel or try to pressure yourself to, to, to learn how to be romantic, to do the things that other people kind of taught you that you should? Every date I ever had was a disaster. One of my friends in class asked me, to go out one night and I thought that, that would be a really fun time. It didn't occur to me that there was gonna be anything else going on. Mm. And then before we went home that night, he stopped me and like took hold of my hand and made eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> and was like, can I ask you a question? I was like, yeah. He was like, was this a date? <laughs> and I was like, was it? I hope not. I think if it was, I sure as hell didn't know. <laughs> and then I felt so bad because he paid for food and stuff. And then I felt pressured to be like present with him romantically. And I just couldn't do that. How long ago did you find the term? I'd say like two years. Going on 
a little over a year and a half. Seven years ago or so, probably on Tumblr. I can't quite remember, but I'm sure, I'm sure that's where I was. Yeah, I feel like that's a cliche for like someone to find their identity on Tumblr. Yeah, so true, but it was, it was really funny, man. It was really yeah. accurate. How did your life change after finding that word? It finally gave me the words for something that I've been trying to, to describe to people for a very long time. Did it make you feel like there was nothing there that was broken? Definitely, that was like the first thing to go. A lot mm. of the crying at night, trying to figure out what's wrong with me and why can't I just, like all of that just went out the window. I was like, oh my God, this is me. Right. Like I was just like, cool, like now I don't even have to worry about it. If I had known that it's normal to just not do that, mm -hmm. it would have saved me a lot of crap. It seems like it goes from like friends to dating to sex, but like why can't you just f your best friend? Good question, I've never considered that. You should. <laughs> How do people typically react when they find out that you're aromantic? They ask me if I'm a psychopath. <laughs> really? Is that, is that a common question? It is, because they think that romance equals empathy. If you can't be romantic, you can't be empathetic, you can't relate on a human level. I can still feel deep, deep connections with my wife. I can feel deep connections with my friends, my best friends. I would say my dating pool is very small because, uh. you know, majority of people are looking for someone to just be all about them and fall in love with them and make them feel all the feelings they want to feel in those kind of dynamics. And I don't have the capacity for that. You were telling me a story about how you posted something talking about your accomplishments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned being aromantic in it. I posted on Facebook saying that I was really happy where I was in my life and like, you know, really enjoying my singleness. Somebody went out of their way to tell me. And that's where you're gonna die alone. And I was because just like. you need a romantic so, relationship yeah, to yeah. die with someone, to have someone yeah, there for exactly. you. Yeah, exactly. I decided that I would screenshot it, repost it on Facebook. Please name something that's worse than being single. The answers range from like, finding out I forgot to close the refrigerator, <laughs> somebody eat your leftovers. There are way worse things in life than being single. And do people ever call you a tease or a flake? when they find out that you are not interested in romance? Yes, because they have expectations around what conventionally attractive people should behave like and what we should want in life. So right? you should have expectations put on you because you are attractive. Yeah, attractive mm -hmm. woman must be in need of a man or a woman or somebody to love. Right. And what does being aromantic mean in relation to gender? Gender, sexuality, and romantic inclinations are also separate. All three very different things. Yeah, you can mix and match, kind of just like a bop it. <laughs> Whatever, all the combinations are good. Straight. Romantic. Oh. Queer. Aromantic. That's good. Do you still desire physical touch? I do like to cuddle. That's where I draw the line. Like, I'm not like, a kiss me for no reason or hold my hand for no uh, reason. Like, if it's not gonna be in the context of like, we're hooking up or we just hooked up, then it's kind of like, you sit on that side and I sit on this side and we just like hang out. I actually really love cuddling. Like, I'm a big fan. Cause you don't see that as romance? Yeah, like it's not ro like romance. It took me a while to learn as I was kind of navigating being Arrow and dating is that like, Two people could be sharing the same experience, but experiencing it very differently. Cuddling for some people is like, oh, we're romantic. And cuddling for me is just like, no, I like the physical touch and being close, you know? Do you consider yourself part of the LGBTQIA community? I do consider myself part of the community, but yeah. like kind of more so because other people have told me that I am. I do not intersect with the community in any other aspect. Uh -huh. uh, so it's a little bit, cause like, yo, I'm cis, I'm straight, male. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'm Arrow. And they're like, oh, cool, you're part of the community now. And I'm like, oh, am I? But then there's a lot of people people in the community that are like, oh, well, you don't suffer like how we suffer, so you're not part of the community. I'm like, oh, okay. So I don't typically argue with any. If you say that I'm not, then I'm not gonna argue with it. It, it feels very odd for me to be like, your community over there? Yeah, I'm part of it. Do you go on dates? Yes, I guess I would say I date. I'm a great in-between dude. Like if you need somebody in between your last relationship and your next relationship, I'm here. You're totally cool with being a rebound? Oh, 100%. <laughs> so that's like where I shine, bro. I'm married, so no. Did you ever date? No, we actually never dated, um, ever. Cause we spent the first part of our relationship in the closet. I had her come and live in my house with mm. my parents and we became roommates. And my parents for two years didn't know that we were more than roommates. But not romantically. So you just like you had to hide that romance exactly. in public. Exactly. A couple years later we got married. And why did you get married? Did you feel like a need because of the law or something? Cause most people consider marriage to be a very romantic thing. I would disagree. Most of the heteronormative people, when I talk about how much I love my wife or how much I love being married to her, 
or how like she's like the best part of me they go i'll oh, give it five years <laughs> uh, they do we've been going for seven years and every time i look at her i don't have words mm. like i i love her so much just mm. because i don't want to hold your hand doesn't mean that I wouldn't do anything for you. Is your wife also aromantic? She's on the aromantic spectrum, yeah. So she definitely is more romantic than I am in the sense that she will seek out holding hands, mm. but she's not one for dating. She's not one for public displays of affection. So do you hold hands to make sure that she has her needs met? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, since she is inclined to hold hands or she's inclined to sit with me on the couch mm. physical touch to her is very important mm. so i make sure that i'm present for her and she knows that since i'm kind of touch averse in general and that i am aromantic that i know when she reaches out in that way um it, it means something say you hate the color yellow mm -hmm. but your partner loves seeing you in yellow once or a couple times a year yeah to make them happy yeah you put on some yellow for them True. and you're like oh man this is garbage <laughs> but they look at you and they do the whole thing where they're yeah. like you're in yellow you look so handsome <laughs> do it do especially it especially if it's not like it doesn't hurt me exactly. it doesn't take something away from me exactly it's just an aversion there you go it's just like god why do i have to be in yellow why do you have to like this mm -hmm. but do you love me i'll wear yellow yeah <laughs> do you still desire companionship i personally am one of those people that wants to have a companion mm -hmm. i want to be around someone like me just because I don't feel romantic inclinations doesn't mean that i don't want a companion i could never live with anyone mm. and i'm not the like I have to have a partner type. Is that because it feels like coupling up? Yeah, I, I get repulsed yeah. by anything that even resembles that type of like coupling. Like I just, I can't. How do you handle when someone grows a romantic desire, like some kind of romantic feelings for you? I kind of have to like almost purposely keep some distance with partners at times to like make sure that I'm not being right. perceived as like what I'm not trying to put out there. You, know? you have to constantly be aware of what people have been taught certain actions mean. Basically your brain stores all this information in folders and then it recalls that information in order to like let you know what's going on. Yeah. But I feel like a romantic people, at least for me, it feels like the romantic folder is not there. So like anything that would go to the romantic folder goes to either friend or family or like sexual, you know what I'm right. saying? So like all that stuff gets tied into one of these other folders, but some of that information goes to other people's romantic folder. Mm. And so it's just kind of getting filtered differently. So Communication. Like, Divinity, I am in love with you. And I just go like. <laughs> It's just all about communication. So I feel like there is a tendency to feel like I did something wrong or whatever by not communicating enough maybe mm. of who I was, right? But then at the end of the day, people cannot make themselves be one or the other. So if you see that the connection is going in a direction where someone's gonna end up hurt, it's time to sit down and talk. Is it possible for aromantic people to feel heartbreak? I've been heartbroken by a friend. The betrayal of a friend or finding out that you really loved someone as a friend and you thought that they were like in your corner and that they were your person and you find out that like what you were experiencing with them, they were just like not really experiencing with you or they were trying to use you in some way to some advantage. It's still very hurtful, yeah. right? And I mean, there's no real other way for it to hurt but in your heart. Heartbreak is the same thing. We've been taught that heartbreak is associated with romance or that destruction of our expectations of romance yeah have you ever dropped your toast butter side down that's no, heartbreak but it sounds <laughs> <laughs> that's heartbreak why do you think there are skeptics out there who don't believe that aromanticism exists at all that say no this is a, a human trait that we are all born with no matter where you look, like there's romance everywhere from stories, commercials, movies. Oh yeah, to so the point where we are taught that we are broken if we aren't finding or at least making it our life's mission to find that romance. Exactly, and so it just is completely out of some people's realm of like imagination that someone is outside of that system. Yeah. Because it's so permeated throughout our system. It's literally a non-issue. Like I don't even think about it. You don't know what you you've don't never know. had. Yeah, exactly. So it's yeah. like, oh, you don't fall in love, like romantically. I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I don't. People don't like the idea that they've been duped. So if they see an aromantic person that's kind of over it, 
and they lived their whole lives according to the idea of romance they've been taught and it's not working for them, they're going to attack aromantic people because we quote, figured it out. Do you feel like you have an adverse reaction to these things because of that societal expectation? Yes and no. Um, a lot of it's just like the intention behind the act. Cause like if my best friend shows up with flowers and a card, I'm gonna love him for it. But if some potential suitor arrives trying to impress me with plant vaginas, I'm not gonna be as interested. Mm -hmm. It's just not my thing. Right, plant vaginas. Roses. Roses, though that's, now I get it. I know a lot of that's just cultural. Like mm -hmm. um, saying you're aromantic could possibly mean different things depending on where you're from. Aromantics from different parts of the world, whatever that culture deems to be romance, might affect how their aromanticism presents. My dad's side of the family is French. Whenever we would go over to France to visit them, there's kind of like this gentle hug and they kiss on the cheek multiple times, but that's never considered like romantic intent because the whole family does that to mm. greet. It's a genuine greeting in France. For me, growing up with that, I was never viewing that as a sort of like, oh, they're coming on to me or, oh, they want something more or, oh, I have to reciprocate in some way. It's genuinely just saying hello in another country. But like, if you were to do it here, because in America, that could mean that you want something more if you're kissing someone sure. on the cheek. That's, that would probably be less of an inclination for me. Do you think that you would view romantic gestures the same way as you do, you know, with <laughs> repulsion, if there were absolutely no societal standards or any kind of cultural idea of what that meant? or was ever established in the first place. I don't think that the repulsion would exist in a society like that because everything would fall under the umbrella of this is just how we treat people that we care about. Mm -hmm. But because those like conditionings and indoctrinations are there, mm -hmm. then it's a set of behaviors where you start to recognize, oh, you're doing that because of this. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want the this, so don't do that. So do you think that anyone would do romantic gestures if they were never taught? to them? If they were never taught to us and there were people who wanted to show someone how special they were, they would, I, I think too, would do it without hesitation. And I do think that if it wasn't taught to us that way, I wouldn't have the repulsion with the romantic stuff. Before we continue learning about the world of aromantics, do you have any interest in parenting or having kids? I'd like to thank Purple for sponsoring this episode. Purple mattresses provide incredible comfort while you sleep by using what they call the grid, which is basically this revolutionary ventilated design that allows air to flow through it so you can stay cool all night without flipping it halfway through the night. One of the biggest things that prevents me from getting a full night's sleep is how I feel like I can never find the right position for my head on a pillow, and halfway through the night I'll wake up face down in a pillow and my neck will just be completely but the grid, on the other hand, somehow supports and cushions my head and makes me feel like I am straight up floating on a cloud. And the same technology is in their mattresses too. So no matter what position you sleep in, you will be comfortable. I used to think that memory foam was revolutionary, but then I experienced the grid and it bounces back as you move and shift throughout the night and it is no joke. Purple has somehow found a new level of comfort that I had no idea could even exist. And right now, you'll support this series and get 10% off any order of $200 or more by going to purple.com slash Padilla and using promo code Padilla. Again, that's purple.com slash Padilla and with promo code Padilla, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. Terms apply, of course. And I'd also like to thank Omen for sponsoring this episode. On Omen Gaming Hub, you can download Oasis, the free, easy to use add-on that lets you create a virtual room for you and up to 15 of your friends to share a private game, watch parties, or whatever else you might need to see 15 beautiful faces all on screen at once. Oasis makes connecting and gaming with friends much easier with advanced screen sharing settings and seamless audio and video quality so you don't have to worry about a shitty internet connection or tech problems throwing everything out of whack and causing you to sit there relentlessly so trying to fix your video and audio settings while your friends sit there having the time of their lives without you and basically, what I'm trying to say is it won't suck. And because you can use voice or text chat while you share your screen or play along with someone else's, Oasis allows you to hang out with your friends wherever you are. And yes, I do mean wherever. Play together, watch together, chat together, stream together, all with Oasis by Omen. Go to bit.ly slash dayoasis to download Oasis on Omen Gaming Hub and try out the beta today. Now, back to the world of aeromantics. 
you have any interest in parenting or having kids? I can't imagine having crotch goblins in this economy. I don't is want- Is that the term for someone that comes out of a crotch? I guess. Or is that for someone that's the height of a crotch? Whoever was screaming on the plane today all the way to LA, Blink. that's a crotch goblin. Got it. No kids for me, mm. absolutely no kids for my wife. Both of us are completely against it. That has nothing to do with you being aromantic? No, it just has me uh, being child averse. Child repulsed. Child repulsed. <laughs> yeah, I see one and I push it away. I had a funny conversation with a friend of mine. So he's like, oh, so you're aromantic, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, so you're never gonna have kids? And I was like, actually, I'm really excited about having kids sometime. And he's like, how are you gonna do that? And I was like, oh, I'm just gonna ask a friend and just co-parent. And he was like, you can't do that. And I was like, why can't I? And you could see, see his yeah. gears being where I'm like, dude, if you wanna do this, you, it's a package deal. You have to do everything. If I'm you like, want a kid, you dude, have to be in love. Yeah. Just like all the yeah. parents out there who accidentally had their children. And I feel like he felt like he was cheated because he never thought to think outside of the box. I do. Given the chance, I would love to be a mother. I would love to co-parent and just like have a best friend that I have a child with. You don't need to have a romantic connection between two parents mm -mm. to parent as a child. As long as our core values line up, that's what matters, right? right? It's not, as long as that person's like respectful and loving and honest and there's so many other attributes that you look for in someone that you wanna do something that's big with that don't involve being in love with them. What do you think is the biggest misconception about aromantic people? that we, we can't feel, that we're not putting in our half. If you're seeking a relationship, you're giving it your all. Just because you don't show it the same way as an alloromantic person doesn't make it any less valid. Mm -hmm. So to say that we don't feel, I just don't think it's fair. It's, yeah. it's like telling a colorblind person that like, oh, trust me, you'll see the colors eventually. All right, you got five seconds to shout out or promote anything you want directly into camera. Sick, at Nick Hampshire on YouTube, Instagram, all that stuff, nickhampshire.com. I'm a LA-based photographer, influencer, so hit me up if you'd like to do some work. So you can find me on Instagram at Officially Divinity, and if you like my hair, you can follow me at Lulu Gotti. Ask me and my wife any questions you want at our Instagram, uh, Mystical Aero Aces, and Hail Satan. Yo, everybody go follow Anthony Padilla. My man is dope, his channel is so fire, <laughs> and he has curly hair like me, so. You know what that means, you gotta subscribe. You gotta subscribe. <laughs> well, there you have it. I spent a day with Aromantics, and I feel like I understand the idea of romance a little bit more. And I'm realizing just how many things we feel are intrinsically human that may just be intrinsically cultural. How many things do we feel shame for not feeling or not doing right when we're actually perfectly healthy exactly as we are? This is a really weird, awkward story, but yeah, we hear. were out uh, in Europe and I like went into our hotel room and he like busts in the door and yeah. like grabs the remote from me and it's like, there's free porn on the on TV in Europe. Yeah. And like puts on porn and like starts watching it. And I'm just like, uh, I'm gonna go. And I, like I walked <laughs> out and uh, the next day we're like getting ready to leave for the day. And he's like, hey, I wanna have a talk with you. I'm like, okay. And he's like, are you gay? And I was like, <laughs> No, and he's like, it's okay if you are, man. You, know? you don't want to watch porn yes. with your dad, you're gay. My, my dad is a wild dude, dude. He is very wild. And uh, I'm sure it was other stuff too along the way. But yeah, still, maybe, but, but definitely that was a definite part of it. <laughs>